I just want us to continue our part three of business planning unit four. The objectives will hinge on completing or meeting the assessment criteria uh, P3 and uh, P4, which we will touch on in, to some degree. So in the previous session, we looked at actually producing a content list, which I'll just go very quickly to the board and go over these elements. We will recall what we covered here regarding the production of a contents list. We looked at what should be in the contents list in the previous session, if you do a look at it. We have introduction, that's what should be in your business plan, contents list, contextual background about your business and the elements that we have looked at were the business status, uh, business location, vision of your business, products and services, values, business uh, development objectives, market analysis and uh, risk uh, management, the new sort which we have already discussed in terms of uh, what's S, strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. We have financial projection and we have investing in other portfolios. These are some of the important things that I'd like us to look at. But let me just try to look at the materials over here in terms of what should be covered. We have technically um, covered how to draw a business plan in terms of producing contest list and we have begun descriptions. Now let us go a little bit in describing what should be in a business plan and I want us to follow us uh, through this program plan here. If I continue working with uh, the uh, sample, which is the uh, Amakaya Wingi uh, business plan, I hope this will give us a more context to what we want to achieve. And I believe that uh, it's gonna be of help to all of us. Now, in this session, I want us to put flesh to the parameters of our development here. And may I, I just apologize with the background noise that we can hear on the, uh, uh, it's, it's actually the computers are making so much noise. I'm so surprised. I cannot hear them now, but the cameras are able to pick up very low sounds. So bear with us with the quality of the uh, production. The background noise, we can't hear it now, but cameras are so sensitive, they pick up every bit of sound. So that's the kind of sound you hear in the background. So uh, do bear with us. Now, we're looking at uh, about your business. Business status, what is business status? Can somebody tell me what business status is? And write down very quick what you think your business status is. There are several types of businesses that you can have and the types of status that you can have. There's a limited company, private limited company, sole trader, partnership, etc. So you must know what type of business it is. If it's a private limited company, your businessman must be able to say that. It's very important. Bear with me. Uh, next door classrooms are uh, closing and everything else. Your business should be able to state that. It's a private limited company. Why is that important? Because when you are actually doing a business plan, you should be able to inform the people the exact situation of your business, the exact status, the legal status. That's important. So that must be very clear in your business plan. Business location. Where are you located in the world, in that country? In that country, which city? which suburb, which area, it's very important. Your domicile area is a place probably where the business is legally registered. That must become clear. If you do have branches within the country, you must also say that in the business. If you do have uh, partner businesses of the same type abroad, 
If it's important at that point, you must say that. But if it's something that you envision, it can come into the documentation. Location, your registered office must be clear. Vision. What do we mean vision? It's very important to look at vision. Why? Vision will answer questions such as, let me just very quickly go to P3 and P4. I'll just go to the study material which come up, up on the screen as well. Uh, when you have vision clearly spelled out, probably you'll be able to put into context um, P4. P4 simply means, as says, describe what is meant by a competitor and give an example in your own business the description should not exceed 500 words okay how would you know that you've got competitors simple and very straightforward if my vision is very clear vision of my business is to make every candidate who comes to the West Midlands Open College succeed, run into success with us. That's my vision. That's our vision. That's our, our focus. Run into success with West Midlands Open College. But what is West Midlands Open College about? Number one, it provides training. What type? Further education, continuous professional development, and workshops short courses, etc. Which areas? Wide range of areas. We entrepreneurship, health and social care, IT, business administration, teaching and assessing learning, and more. So once I define the vision and the kind of things we offer, then I have a clear picture who my competitors are. I have a clear picture where I'm leading people. That's a vision. Where am I going to produce people who can run into success? With what? Entrepreneurship, health and social care, IT, etc. You understand that? That's very important. Your vision, your vision will determine a number of parameters of things that you're going to put in your roadmap, the guide to your destination. Are you happy with that? So here, you've got to think through. Sometimes, and most times, vision evolve, meaning Although the core vision is A, the dimension of it begins to grow and you begin to amplify and modify so that you have a crisp point where if you threw an arrow, it will go just that on the point. For example, nowadays, in my own personal case, with things I do, I've been solely identified as somebody who focuses on investment, investment in changing the people's mindsets and also investment of the resources, time and money into things that can reproduce. So when people see me in the meetings, what comes to their mind? Investment, mindset change. And second thing that comes to their mind, a man that links diaspora people back into their home country because of the way I operate. And in my documentation, my literature, these things do come clear. So your vision must be able to set a direction where you are going and where you want to lead your customers. Products and services. I touched on products and services when I mentioned the, the vision. So in your business plan, it must be very clear what are your products because these are things you are telling people to come and buy from you. These are things you are telling people or asking to come and buy from you. Buy from you in exchange of their money with your product or services, what are these? It's also good to put them in bullet points. Some people go at length in just making a huge description. I think I work better with bullet points. Number one, we provide training. Number two, counseling. Number three, linking people to business and business to people. That is very clear. When somebody comes to you, Oh, actually, I need counseling. That's when you break it down into little pieces of what you do. But if you do a huge description, people will be lost. And in this time and age, not many people are very friendly with a lot of text. It's a fast world. And in fact, it does make sense if you are brief and to the point. That way you can communicate your message coherently and clearly. 
and to the point. Are you with me? So just use bullet points. Now, after you've got uh, the product and services, go to the values. In the previous session, I did talk about the values and I gave an example what these values are for an organization I, I use, which is Amakai Wing Steel. What are values I still remember? It should be on page 10 on the business plan. What are values? These are moral things that you abide by. Ethical trading, things that are legal, things that can add value to human beings. I would not trade in illegal substances because that's not part of my business and it will never be part of my business. I would not bring in a, a business that trades in legal substances to come and pitch at the Macawing platform. So we make it very clear, ethical trading. Number two, uh, part of the values, it's a business integrity. If I say one pound, it means one pound. If I say 1,000 pounds, it means 1,000 pounds, and so forth. Sometimes business doesn't really come out as good as it's expected. Even in that, when things don't work out well, there must be a way of saying sorry. There must be a procedure for vindication to look. We tried, it didn't work out. Best practice. You got to look at what's the best practice in the industry and abide by those parameters. You must be able to do this in your own business plan. Try and find examples in your industry. For example, if you're in the energy, you are selling charcoal. What are the regulations in the energy industry? What does the government say? What does legislation say? So those can come into values and you must be able to comply with that. Corporate governance. Are you going to put a structure in place that manages your business such that if A, B, C needs to be done, it can be done by one of your team members? Or as the case might be, it's very important because these are things that make business succeed or fail. Very critical. Don't ignore that. So your business plan must be very tight on these areas. They must spell it out. Environmental friendly. How, are you, how is your business contributing to make the environment friendly? These are important factors. Listen to what uh, scientists are saying, governments, legislation on certain things, pollution, etc. Charitable and philanthropic, corporate social responsibility, this is what it means. Are you adding value to the community in which you are doing business? Recently, I was in a very powerful meeting in Zambia to which uh, the Council of Mines came together to talk about a number of aspects of development in uh, uh, Zambia. And they touched a lot about corporate social responsibility, things that are adding value to the community. That is very good. Your business must be able to put that into context even before you start trading. So that when you begin to make uh, a huge profit or even a smaller one, at least by you being present in that area, other people's lives, morally, must begin to change as well for the better. So you can also put a strategy for measurement of impact. That's not part of our topic here. So you can see you're putting flesh to the business plan. Business development objectives. How are you going to develop your, 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 your business? For example, you, you can have under these business development objectives, you can have the key business objectives. We say are financial prudence, marketing development, organizational management. These are the key objectives. Then you're going to describe under each of these how you're going to achieve these objectives. So you find that everything that you put on your context list, you begin to describe them. Why do you put them there? Because you want to see how you're going to grow your business. There's a book I was reading about growing your business. I want to share with you this book. For some reason, the previous slide, uh, <laughs> the, the letters we are upside down. I don't know. I can't correct that. I don't know what it was. I hope this one is not going to be upside down. How to Grow Your Business. This is by uh, Alex Blaith. Uh, Alex Blaith describes a number of ways to grow your business. This can be part of your business plan. Developmental areas, for example. Let's, let, me, let me just pick up one area which uh, I was really intrigued by and fascinated um, yes growing your people very important a business that will grow is about the people in the business you must have in your plan how you're going to grow 
your people in the business to be able to run that business with you and for you if you're the business owner. Most importantly, if you don't build manpower or capacity in your organization, eventually it's going to stall and reach a plateau and it can't no, can go no, no further. But if you invest in developing your people, you grow your business. So this is very important. Yeah. Find time for planning. Find time to invest in your staff. Let them learn. Delegate your work. Some things that can be done by others, let them do proficiently not just by yourself. That way you find that you are developing and planning towards growth before you start running. So get this book. The title is How to Grow Your Business by uh, Alex Blythe. It's How to Grow Your Business for Entrepreneurs by Alex Blythe. I'm reading a lot of books. Now I'm very educated than I was before. So coming back to the P2, P3, you're going to now fleshing up your your business plan what 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 it will happen is that what will happen is that when you began you are the content list by the time you are finishing all these things will be fleshed up are you with me on that aspect excellent i'll just pause a little bit here and come back to this i want to bring up just a sample business plan on the uh, a, a, a material a learning resource and just have a quick browse through and then we can pick that from there